This video will look at writing equations for trigonometric graphs that include phase shifts. Here we have a graph below, and we're going to be asked to find the equation. Well, looking at the graph, it appears to be a sine function. It's starting at center, on the origin, and then rising to the maximum, center, min, and then finally back at pi, where it's at center. So if we look at the graph, we can see that it's centered between negative 4 and 4 vertically, which means there is no vertical shift, and the amplitude is 4. If we use it as sine, there's no horizontal shift, and the period would be 1 pi. It's 1 pi because that's where it goes from center to max to center to min, and finally back to center, through a complete cycle. Now, if the period is pi, the frequency would be 2 pi divided by pi. The frequency becomes 2. So let's write the equation. The equation for this would be, well, we said it's sine, and the amplitude is 4, so that'd be 4. y equals 4 sine. The frequency is 2, so quantity 2x, and there's no vertical shift. So the equation is just y equals 4 sine of 2x. But is this really the only possible way to name it? And it turns out the answer is no. If we include a phase shift, we can name this graph using either a negative sine, a positive cosine, or a negative cosine just by saying the graph started somewhere else. So let's look at what it would take to get a negative sine equation instead. Well, positive sine starts at center and rises, a negative sine would start at center and fall. So where on the graph do you see the a graph starting at center and then going to minimum? Well, we could do it at pi over 2. At pi over 2, it's at center, and the next point would be at its minimum. So we could say that this is a negative sine graph, but phase shifted over to pi over 2. Let's look at how to write this. We'll use the y equals. Now the amplitude, the frequency, and all those aren't going to change. The only thing is where we start the graph. So now it's going to be a negative 4, sine. The frequency is still 2, but we're going to phase shift. Now because it's got a frequency something other than 1, we're going to need the double parentheses. We'll say it's 2, quantity, and then because we're shifting to the right, it's x minus, and then pi over 2. And then don't forget to close the double parentheses. Now this isn't even the only way to name the negative sine equation. Negative sine equations, because this graph goes on forever and ever, could be done in an infinite number of ways. We just need any point where it's at center and falling. So we could have actually shifted to the left, to negative pi over 2. If we shift to the left, inside the parentheses it's x plus. So we could have actually named it this way. Or we could have shifted to the right 3 pi over 2, because at 3 pi over 2, if you look at the graph, it's also at center and falling. So another way would have been this. All three of these are different ways to name a negative sine equation for that same graph. Now let's look at what it would take to name it as a positive cosine. Well, cosine should start at max. So find somewhere on the graph where you have a maximum value. For instance, we could start here. But what is that value for the phase shift? I don't have an indication for the tick mark. Well, if the whole period was pi, the half period is pi over 2, the quarter period would be half of that. Half of a half of pi is going to be 1 fourth of pi, or pi over 4. Each tick mark is therefore pi over 4. So if we shift to the right, pi over 4, that would be a cosine. So now we can use y equals 4, cosine, 2, quantity, and because we shifted to the right, x minus pi over 4. Now that's not the only way we could have done it. We actually could have done it other ways. We could have gone to the left, 1, 2, 3 ticks, which would be negative 3 pi over 4, or we could have gone to the right, 5 ticks, to 5 pi over 4. Alright, let's look at what it would take to get a negative cosine equation. A negative cosine equation needs to start at, start at minimum. So for instance here. But what's the value? Well, if each mark indicates 1 pi over 4, this is 3 marks over, so it's 3 of the pi over 4's, or 3 pi over 4. So to do a negative cosine, we'd have to shift to the right, 3 pi over 4. So now we'll get y equals negative 4 cosine 2 quantity x minus 3 pi over 4. Now it may have been simpler just to shift to the left to negative pi over 4, in which case we would have got y equals negative 4 cosine 2 quantity x plus, because we shifted to the left, pi over 4. All right, let's look at some more examples. Here's another one. Now this time the apparent graph doesn't look like a sign. The way the graph is initially looking, it looks like a negative cosine, because on the y-axis it's at the minimum. So we could describe this, let's start with the negative cosine equation, and then to do the other three we're going to need to phase shift it. Well, looking at the graph, it goes from negative 5 to 5. So again, the amplitude is 5, 
and no vertical shift. To go from the minimum to minimum would be 8 pi over 3. So the period is going to be 8 pi over 3, which means the frequency is going to be a little tougher to find. The frequency is going to be 2 pi divided by 8 pi over 3, and that's an ugly compound fraction. So instead, let's change that fraction to multiplying by the reciprocal. Instead of dividing, we can multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. That means the frequency would be the same as 2 pi times, take 8 pi over 3 and flip it, we get 3 over 8 pi. That means the frequency 2 pi times 3 is 6 pi divided by 8 pi. The pi's cancel, and 6 eighths reduces to 3 quarters. So the frequency is 3 fourths. All right, the apparent equation is a negative cosine with an amplitude of 5, a frequency of 3 quarters, and no shifts. So the negative cosine equation would look like this. y equals negative 5 cosine 3 fourths x, or y equals negative 5 cosine 3x over 4. <laughs> to get the other names, we're going to need a phase shift. So let's look at that. To find a positive sine equation, we need to be at center and rising. Where on the graph do you see the graph starting at center, rising? Well, we could use 2 pi over 3. At 2 pi over 3, it's at equilibrium, and then follows by the maximum. So if we phase shift it to the right, that would be x minus 2 pi over 3 in parentheses. It'll look like this. How about a negative sine equation? Now we need to be at center, falling. Where do you see the graph at center, falling? Well, we could use the 2 pi, in which case the equation would be y equals negative 5 sine 3 quarter quantity x minus 2 pi. But it's not the only way. You may have noticed that it's at center falling at negative 2 pi over 3 to the left. In the parentheses, we would have said x plus 2 pi over 3 because it's to the left. How about a positive cosine equation? Well, positive cosine would require the maximum. Where's that at? How about 4 pi over 3? If we shift to the right, in the parentheses, we'll say quantity x minus 4 pi over 3. So the equation becomes y equals 5 cosine 3 quarters quantity x minus 4 pi over 3. All right, let's try one more example here. Why don't you try working this one out, pause the video, and then resume the video when you're ready to check your answers. I'll give you a minute. Well, this time, it's not centered on zero. It's going as low as negative one, and as high as three. That's a distance of four. Half of four would be two. So to find the center line, we'll either count two units up from negative one, or two units down from three, which means the center is 1. So this graph has a vertical shift of 1, and now we can see the amplitude is 2. It starts at maximum on the y-axis, and then it, re it re returns to maximum at 6 pi, which means the period is 6 pi. The frequency would be 2 pi divided by 6 pi, which is 1 third. Now we can name it four ways, but the apparent one is a cosine. We can name it cosine using no phase shift. So let's start with that one first. We're going to use it as a positive cosine with an amplitude of 2, a frequency of 1 third, and a vertical shift of 1. That equation, starting here, would be y equals 2 cosine, either 1 third x or x over 3, and then outside the parentheses plus 1 to indicate it's a vertical shift. Now the other three ways are going to require some type of phase shift. So a positive sign has to be center rising. Well, how about if we move it over here? But I need to figure out what that indication is. One tick to the left. Well, if a full cycle is 6 pi, half cycle is 3 pi, the quarter cycle is going to be 1 half of 3 pi, which would be 3 pi over 2. So the first mark to the left would be negative 3 pi over 2. So we can name it as a positive sign if we phase shift to the left, which becomes in the parentheses x plus 3 pi over 2. Now again, keep in mind, it's a frequency of something other than 1, so we need the double parentheses. So y equals 2 sine, 1 third, quantity, x plus 3 pi over 2, close your parentheses, and then be sure that you also have that, that vertical shift this time. Every one of these will have that same vertical shift, the same amplitude, and the same frequency. The only thing that changes is that horizontal or phase shift, depending on how you want to name it. How about the negative sign? 
Well, the negative sign could be here at 3 pi over 2. So here we'll change it to a negative sign by shifting to the right, which will be in the parentheses, x minus 3 pi over 2. Lastly, let's name it, name it as a negative cosine equation. A negative cosine equation would have to be at minimum. We could use to the right 3 pi. Could have also used to the left negative 3 pi. If we go to the right 3 pi, in the parentheses, that's going to be x minus 3 pi. Alright, thank you for watching.